Dig with everyone, Kojima Toshi, and welcome back to the Inline J Vlood Podcast with me, your host, motherfucking Inline J. Once again, lads, if there's no episode number in the intro, because honestly, at the moment, I do not know my arse from my fucking elbow. This episode is set for release on Friday the 24th of May, which... That could be two days after Bayern Leverkusen win the Europa League in Dublin. If that happened, someone go check on me. Someone go take a pulse, please. Also tomorrow, so the 25th, I'll be going on a trip to Berlin for another cup final with the same team. So please make sure I'm okay. Anyway, this week's episode is an absolute belter. I loved this episode. Firstly, I got to stay in my own city of Cologne. But secondly, because of its absolutely serendipitous timing. When recording this episode just two days before, my guest officially became the new principal flute of the Vidier Funkhouse Orchestra here in Köln after successfully passing her trial period. So we were both in a lovely mood as I sat down and met for the first time, and definitely not the last, Mariana Sophie Buslechner. Now a lot of you will know Mariana from social media. She's a Serb and Austrian flutist who has previously played in the academy over at Staatskapelle Dresden, good orchestra. We chatted about her new job with the Vidier Funkhouse Orchestra and why it's such a unique orchestra as well as a little bit about her time in Dresden. However, we also chatted about shared loves for Die Maus, Tatort and Spetzi. A bit of German education for you guys. And for the first time on Inline G, I got to talk about the Arctic Monkeys. So, Mariana also told us some beautifully personal stories attached to her flute, which were a genuine pleasure to listen to. It's a really special episode. So, regular listeners... You know what to do. You can skip ahead now, but for anyone else, here comes a wee bit of admin. The Inline G podcast is free and always will be free. That's a guarantee. However, if you want to donate to the podcast, you can now do so through the Patreon. On the screen now is the address. And for the audio listeners, it is patreon.com forward slash the Inline G Flute Podcast. It's in the description. It costs five euros or dollars or pounds per month. And with that, you're keeping this podcast alive. You get four episodes a month over here, and a fiver a month is about the price of a pint. So if you think, fuck, I love that podcast, I'd love to buy Gareth a pint if I ever saw him, do it virtually. I do everything around here on my own, okay? Marketing, graphic design, research scripts, audio production, video production, you name it, I do it. Becoming a patron helps generate a regular income for this podcast, meaning I can turn down other work to focus on this. I also get to travel to meet the best flute players in the world as a thank you. You'll get to put your questions to these guys and you'll get the episodes a little bit earlier than everyone else. So if you can afford it, sign up over there. You can unsubscribe at any time. There's no weird fees or any kind of shit like that. You just jump in and out. I do it myself with a lot of podcasts. If you can afford it, it helps a huge amount. And thank you to the people that do. I'm genuinely touched and you guys are really keeping this podcast alive. If you can't afford it, don't worry. Someone else is paying so that you can listen for free. So here is this week's Inline G with the brand new principal flute of the Vidier Funkhouse Orchestra, Spetsy connoisseur, the mouse superfan and indie disco music expert, Mariana Sophie Buslechner. Yeah, I suppose the first thing to say then is congratulations, because you had some pretty big news at the weekend. Do you want to tell everybody what happened at the weekend? Yeah, Actually, on Friday, I passed my trial in the yeah. VDR Funkhaus Orchestra. Yes. <laughs> so, you're officially the new principal flute of the VDR Funkhaus Orchestra then? Yes, officially. Yeah, and how long, six months you were trialing? Yes, about six months. Okay. I started 1st of November, played my first time on the 9th of November, and then, mm. um, like, things went, like, were pretty Quite. fast like yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't expect it to be that soon yeah yeah normally <laughs> it's about a year isn't it in germany usually it's about a year yeah no yeah. like i got a contract for a year and okay. my trial would be one year but they were like i think they were satisfied so and they, were just happy they decided to decide earlier what to happen so. with my position and that's yeah, it i'm Here really lucky to be with my colleagues now for a good amount of time yeah it looks like you're having a lot of fun in the orchestra i've seen in your instagram and stuff yes absolutely i yeah. might have the best woodwind section they look great it looks like they're really like you guys are all friends as well i love that i mean we do a lot of things in free time as well it's oh, like yeah? not only like we go to uh, like the deans then we play our rehearsal and, and then, have concert and then go home it's yeah. like not absolutely not like that you guys go for like dinner and drinks together uh, first of may we i was invited at the principal forgot Felix is like absolutely kind person. Yeah. And with my uh, second second flute colleague Georg, um, and they they knew that I have like nothing to do on yeah. that day, so they invited me. And um, what did you do? 
we I went uh, there with my bicycle mm-hmm. and uh, we had like lunch barbecue oh <laughs> lovely yeah yeah it is quite rare that a lot of orchestras like the woodwind section they don't hang out after work it's quite rare that i think yeah i mean it's it's a small orchestra i mean we're like 52 to 56 people i think yeah so yeah. it's like every position in the woodwind and brass section is like once it's yeah. like only one person one so player, i'm yeah. the only principal flute yeah. Georg is the only second flute yeah. like so we're only eight people in the section. True, we, yeah. We have every rehearsal, every concert, like everything together. Yeah, all Because the of that, yeah. like the only thing where it changes are the strings because there are more people than we are. Yeah, okay. But actually, I have, um, I play every... Every piece, concert, yeah. yeah. Every, everything, yeah. usually, throughout the year. It's really easy because you don't have to like see and switch the plans and yeah and you don't have to like play with different players all the time either and have to adapt to them you can just you get to know each other as players quite well then if you're always playing together um in the six months any highlights anything that was particularly great in the last six months with the orchestra the absolute highlight was the uh, magic of movie concert oh what me. did you play like john williams yeah. the total program <laughs> did you play star wars absolutely did yeah. you play the flute solo in star yes. wars then ah oh. That's my favorite flute solo of all time, and I really think it should be in like the like the Pobespiel books, like the orchestral extra books, because it is like it's a solo you play quite a lot in an orchestra. Yeah. And you never really get to rehearse it or do anything, and it's quite hard. Like it's, I think it's a difficult enough solo. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole music is so difficult. It is. I was so <laughs> surprised because everyone is like laughing about it, but. For example, the ET music. ET is hard. Oh my god! I practiced so much because yeah. I was like really. You had a lot to do in that. Like for for example, the first two pages yeah. were absolutely. Yeah, it I looked at nightmare. them and it was so. It was like black. Yeah, <laughs> it was not even white. It's always fast, fast, fast. Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters glass. That's a great one. Yeah. That's a great one. That was that. Yeah, we play next in the coming upcoming season. We play also two concerts, Magic of Movies. Okay. Again, with different program always. So you always change the program. Yeah. Okay. It's yeah, like a lot of stuff there. Yeah, it's also a lot of stuff to learn because most of the time you don't even have recordings to that uh, their True. complete new arrangement. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. and when I was in Dresden, um, I I was completely used to have the score. Yeah. And to have recordings and yeah, like f- for in this orchestra, it's sometimes difficult because we record also for television. We record for. Um, advertisements yeah. and yeah. it's for children uh, like series and the um, TV and then it's pretty um, sometimes challenging to like have in, yeah. in mind how it would sound especially for like you don't get the generation. score like yeah. you get it like three days or two oh, days really? before sometimes <laughs> and then okay wow so you really are just yeah, yeah I'm, sometimes I'm really stressed out by it I can understand that yeah yeah, because I think even when I was at college, I relied on recording so much because I grew up with Spotify, obviously. So recordings were so important to me and how I learned music. And I think, yeah, maybe like the older generation, when they didn't have Spotify, they probably would have learned that skill of just reading the music. But we don't do that. So if I didn't have recordings, I'd be so stressed out for concerts if I can't study the score without a recording. Yeah. It's a nightmare. Yeah. But the other concert that was an absolute highlight for me was that like one and a half weeks ago, it was uh, Ladies of Soul. Yeah, you were talking about this. Whole yeah. program with Onita Boone oh, and so her cool. band, The Unsuspected Suspects. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. The, the Unusual Suspects, sorry. Okay. And, yeah, good, uh, yeah. and she is such an amazing singer and person, oh. human being, like talking to her was an absolute Yeah, you got to meet her as well, yeah. Yeah, I got to meet her, I got to take pictures with her, we went that, like yeah. for a drink afterwards, oh, and really? then we were talking like in two in the night. Like, mm. What did you drink? What did you have to drink together? I don't know. I'm so nosy with this. <laughs> did you have cocktails? Did you have wine? No, I think we had Spetsy? just beer. Okay. Just beer. Cash? No. Okay. 
We'll talk about Kaz later, don't worry. We'll get into that later, yeah. <laughs> I, as Austrian, I have a little bit of difficult... Oh, really? ...relationship with Kaz. I, I only drink it in occasion, and it's when it's, like, really cold. But yeah. actually, I prefer, like, pills or something. Okay, you have taste, yeah. Well, we'll get to that later, because I really want to talk <laughs> about that. But yeah, in the concert as well, you were telling me beforehand, you had to improvise. Yes, I had. Uh, it was, uh, like, first time for me improvising in television, in the radio, or, like... <laughs> Um, and with, you have the chords there, there's nothing written there, it's like completely free, it turns mm. out completely different every time you play it. Yeah. And the tricky thing was like a few days before that I got my wisdom tooth out because it got really <laughs> bad, yeah. uh, inflamed. So it was really hard for me, I was like on ibuprofen all yeah, day. Yeah, a lot of pain, medication, and yeah. <laughs> yes. And, Which maybe uh, helps a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. It was like maybe a bit more chilly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It much more relaxed when you have the remote. Yeah. And uh, it was pretty like, yeah, exciting for me. I really want to do it. So my colleague said, yeah, if you if you can't play, then, yeah. then don't come. Okay, okay. But otherwise, this piece would not, have not be played like that. And yeah. I really wanted to do it. I, w I wanted to take this chance because yeah. I love jazz as well so yeah. much. I like improvising and it's a direction I want to go as well. Yeah. Um, when I'm not playing in the orchestra, yeah. like personally, not only does the classical solo flutist mm. uh, way that everyone's doing, like I also want to um, explore some Different other... Different types of music. Yeah. yeah. Like jazz flute players. How many are they? They're so cool. And it's so cool. Yeah, I really want to do it and try it as well. well that was, yeah, and see I how now we, you have good experience with it. Yeah, where it will go. <laughs> it's quite a stressful situation to do your first ever improvised one is on TV after three days after getting a wisdom tooth out. That is, that's good going. Um, I should ask you that. Or just, I'll ask you to explain quickly because a lot of the audience are British or American. You play on the, radio, uh, the video, but the video... There's two orchestras, I suppose. Yes. There's four groups professing with the Vedi but there's two orchestras. So there's a Vedi your orchestra, and there's also the symphony orchestra. Can you explain the difference between the two? Yeah, the symphony orchestra plays the classical music, like yeah. uh, Brahms, all the symphonies, um, and all the projects um, with classical music. It's a bigger, much bigger orchestra. Yeah, it's a really like, big orchestra, yeah. Um, I think it's 120 people, yeah. I think it's like. Yeah, they and, do a lot of that, yeah. Um, like the, the groups are much bigger they yeah. have much more uh, rehearsals and concerts yeah so your orchestra then can you tell us a little bit about what they do as music if it's easy to yeah. say yeah so do symphony orchestra does um the classical stuff and we do like basically everything we yeah. play uh once a year opera we oh, yeah. play um like waltzer music we play jazz symphonic jazz okay. we play movie music uh music for ev everything basically we uh, record for advertising we recorded the music for the the sending with the mouse so. i have to talk to you about that as well i talked to you about that <laughs> that's a, that's a topic i have to get on but yeah so i keep going <laughs> yeah and um yeah basically everything we also play classical music but not that often yeah so currently you opera as well though yes we once a year have an opera project that's so cool i didn't know so that. we play open air uh, opera for example this year in dortmund cool. uh, in june 9th of june and what do you play uh Werther Klangvokal. i don't know exactly yet because i didn't look at okay. that <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay i've never heard of that oh no i don't think i know it i think it's always an opera that is an opera that is not um, that famous. Okay, like perform less than, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's cool though, I love doing that kind so of stuff. So th this is once a year, um, mostly at the end of the season, mm -hmm. when it's uh, warm enough to play open air. Okay, but that's so exciting to get all that different type of music as well. It's quite challenging, like I'm sure as a flute player, switching between all those styles must be quite difficult. It, it is difficult, but um, that's why I applied for Yeah. That's you like, enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because um, after two years in opera, I, I mean, I'm so thankful what I learned there and what I experienced there. And yeah. I played, I already played like over 30 operas dif yeah. in different position. And I love it. Like I also, you know, sometimes I play in Bonn and yeah. I always love to come back to play some opera at the time. But I, after two years... I could not imagine doing it like for my whole Forever, yeah. 
well, not like my whole career. Yeah, yeah. So I thought about playing in the orchestra yeah. in in general because I was a little bit like tied up with this idea of playing written score okay. that play so many orchestras in the world. Yeah. For all the time. Yeah. And for me, it was like not that much variety so that I yeah. could say, okay, I want to play in an opera house okay. or a symphonic orchestra okay. for 40 years now. Yeah. Yeah. So that I looked for for something different. And then this on Muvag, this um this application form like showed oh, up. Oh, perfect timing. And I was like, yeah. I will try that. Yeah. I will try that because it was they made an addition like three, four times yeah, for they this have. position. Yeah, they've done a lot of application. Yeah, never got anybody. Yes, and I I thought like it was a sign probably. Yeah, they're waiting for you. Yeah. So I applied for it. I looked up the repertoire and I was like, oh my god, it is so cool. And I mean, they played the Machiavelli sessions with George Smith and yeah. with Loyal Karna yeah, and I saw Kumar that, so. and, and like I was, oh my god, I need to be in this orchestra. Like, Oh, actually on that, I never thought about this, but when you're auditioning for the orchestra, do they have different excerpts? Do you have to play different stuff for the audition? Than for normal orchestras? Yeah, for like a normal, set. like you know the way we have to play like, you know, Madison Scherzo and La Play Midi and all that. Do you do all that in the audition for this or is it different? No, it's it was not different. The only difference was I, I um, there was a lot of Bernstein ah, okay. in the audition. Okay. Um, like like a lot of ex- excerpts um, and from Breasted Story and yeah. Candide and everything. It's good music and, as well. Um, yes, absolutely. And uh, like Hummelflug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and different stuff like oh, that. That's so fun. But besides from this, it wasn't it was like no same. difference. Okay, um, so you did still play. Did you played with Mozart Concerto and stuff like that. Then, Mozart yeah. Concerto was in the first round. Okay, there was only two rounds for my audition. Okay, okay. So I won after the second round. Okay, and um, all in one day. Yes, it was like it was pretty fast as well. It was like two and a half hours. Audition. Wow, and that's it. Yes, yeah, like that's we were incredible. five people in the second round, and yeah. then decided for for me yeah, after that, that it was really. It was a really cool audition as well. Like yeah, yeah. I remember going. I yeah. I think I. I think I followed you on Instagram anyway at that time. And I remember you posted about it. And I was like, wow, that was done quick. <laughs> yeah, because I saw them advertise for the job as well. And as you said, they've been advertising for that job for quite a while. So it's so nice to see someone get it. And also, it is a really well-known orchestra. Like I think for that style of orchestra, the must be the most well-known in Germany. No, yeah, I would say so. Like, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of different. Um, people watching like from every yeah. age like from the really little ones with the mouse concertos yeah. and until like <laughs> yeah, yeah the, really old people yeah okay can and i actually my, i have to talk about this because when i went on your instagram i saw a picture of you with the mouse yeah and we have to talk about the mouse because i've never mentioned him in this podcast i didn't know who it was until i came here but then my girlfriend is obsessed i think every german is obsessed with the mouse yes and then obviously it's a very air character. Can you just tell us who the mouse is? The mouse is, and then we'll talk about your connection. Yeah, mouse is uh, having is is like a mouse having a series, um, and like explaining things to uh, children on the television. And yeah. There is the mouse with the elephant. Yeah. The small blue elephant. Yeah. And, and the duck as well. Yes. But we don't duck. see the duck very often. Apparently no. People didn't like the duck. Do you but see the, the duck? At- the very air have you ever done a concert with the duck no it's only the mouse at the time no elephant either yeah and she is um it's a she <laughs> and it's always the same person is it really okay yeah in the costume it's like a job oh wow okay it's their full so, like job. really a job yeah. wow okay yeah because it's a cartoon which i watched a few times because yeah the cartoon's called sendung mit the mouse and mit their mouse is it mit the mouse yeah. yeah and i was quite surprised because like, the mouse is a cartoon character and I thought the program, it's on every Saturday morning, I think, at like 10am mm-hmm. on video air. I thought it was a show about the mouse, but the mouse is only in it for like a minute. So like every week they explain different things to children. You know, maybe it's something about biology or something about schools or something about first aid. It's always random topics and they get people to talk about it. And then the, mid, the bits in between is where the mouse pops up. Yes. And there's like these clips that some of the clips are from like the 1950s as well. And they still use them in it, like the new ones. 
But the mouse isn't in it that much. Like the mouse no, is in no. it for like three minutes. No, but um, it's like, yeah, she's the main character and she has a really a lot of personality. I love it. Yeah. I, I watched it as a child as well. I was so Did obsessed you? with it. And then when I found out that the orchestra where I'm playing in now actually home. recorded music for it yeah. and has concerts with the mouse every year, I was like, oh, I'm, oh my that, God. That's like, the dream. <laughs> I got obsessed even more. Yeah, I can understand that. Like with the idea of... Um, it's <laughs> it is. But do you, did you have the mouse in Austria then when you grew up? Did you grow up in Austria? In or television. Yeah. I, I grew up in Austria. Okay. I grew up in Upper Austria and went here to school, studied okay. in Graz, Vienna. Yeah, okay. And did you have the mouse in Austria? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. A lot. <laughs> yeah, people are obsessed with the mouse here. I actually got a loving you cap as well with the mouse tennis club on it. It's very nice. But I, I've got it in the mouse. But when I saw that you guys do the concerts, my girlfriend was like, we have to go to the concert. She's been dying to go. Um, how many concerts do you do with the mouse? With the mouse, it's like every year is different. This okay. year we had eight concerts. Eight. <laughs> so the mouse, co- like someone dressed up in the mouse costume comes up on stage as well. Yes. And like she never talks. And there's Andre, who's uh, Andre Gatzke. He's uh, the... Doing the moderation the, in, yeah, the, in yeah. the series. In the series, yes. Yeah. In the television. Yeah. And he explains in the concerts different things to children. Oh. So also people from the orchestra gets like involved oh, really? in the whole story. This year, for example, um, the mouse had a travel passport and we, okay. we traveled through different countries and <laughs> for every country like there was Japan, there was my colleague Tomo, he's yeah. from Japan, so he explained like what is sakura like oh, the cool. um what does it mean yeah, and yeah. um so they learn about music in the concerts as well yeah. he explained like uh how is it with the japan key yeah yeah how is it different from the european one and um then we traveled to South Korea, then we played K-pop music and the mouse came like all dressed up with K-pop. Like, what? Stiff. That she had, like so much fun. Yeah, it was it's really a lot of fun. Yeah. And then we have the <laughs> mouse dance. Everyone okay. can watch it on um, on uh, YouTube and yeah. everywhere in video. And it's a special dance and always at the beginning and in the end we okay. do the mouse dance. Do you have the dance as well? We can. Did you? We. Uh, I always played. <laughs> ah, okay. So okay. it's either wise one plays and the other one dances. Mm. So, but I can, I could stand up and yeah. go there in the front and dance with. Okay, them. but you're a principal flute, so you have to play then, don't you? You have to take your. I seriously. mean, I did because <laughs> you know I, w- I was in my trial. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. like, like, but now this. I will probably. <laughs> now I will probably dance. Okay. Yeah. Now you've got a job. <laughs> that, that's the best benefit of getting the job. Then yeah. you can dance with the mouse. <laughs> Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, my girlfriend was obsessed with that. And you met the mouse then as well. Did you get it? You got a photo with the mouse. I got a photo with Did her. You it was really, it photo? was really difficult to get a yeah. photo with her because, like, every minute, <laughs> this person has to be in the costume is like hell because yeah, it's so it's hot big, and heavy. Yeah. And um, we really had to time it. An endorsement after the concert, <laughs> like in the in the break from the concert, they were like, "You have one minute," and then I for came the in. Yeah, no, for Just for, for me. Okay. You have one minute to get a good picture and then i was like yeah 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 and then it's got you need to go out okay we need to take off the costume it's like too hot do all the players try and get photos or maybe they've already got their photos with her i mean a lot of them yeah. already got photos so that time For it was me, just it was, you it was, yeah it was really <laughs> yeah and I, okay. I need to make make an appointment for this yeah. like <laughs> To tell them, okay, I'm it the principal important. flute. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know who I am? I need to. <laughs> I need a photo with the mouse. My whole career has been going to this. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah. Do you guys do? Just what I'm thinking as well. Do you do the music to Tatort? Is that all video as well? well? I don't know yet, but it would be worth. Have you played it in the concert? Yeah. Have you played the Tatort theme in the concert yet? They made a Tatort few years ago with in in Cologne, uh-huh. Tatort Cologne, with Tatort. the orchestra. There was something about like a chalice, chalice beam, a victim, like yes. a few years ago. I've seen that. I they already did something. Yeah. I didn't personally play in but it. But that was the actual players? Co- yes. Oh. My colleagues participated like in this recording. Oh, that was so much fun. Yeah, because they did one in Minchin as well, where they did like a, an orchestra one special. It was like a it was special music and stuff composed for. I love Tatort. When I moved to Germany, it was one of the things I watched every Sunday. Every Sunday. Yeah, quarter past eight. Eight fifteen. Oh my because god. Because it's a great way. To, do you watch it as well? Yes. Oh. Every Sunday, it's <laughs> like my must team? have. 
Hmm. I love. I do like Köln. Schengen Ballauf. I, I like Köln. I like them as well, but I grew up in Austria, so you have the Wien, Vienna. Thing. Yeah. It was most of because it's like so raw. They don't. Uh, yeah, it's dark. They don't. It's so raw and also like really the the dialect and the, yeah. the accent is like pretty coming through. It's hard. I think. I know what they do with the Switzerland one, but I think the Vienna one as well, you can watch it with like normal German dubbed because a lot of Germans even can't understand Vienna and Switzerland Deutsch. I think when I watched it, it was normal German, like it was dubbed from German to German. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I love the Vienna one actually. But it is good. Um, Münster as well. Oh no, I hate Münster. Really? I hate Münster. It's too ridiculous. There's always like aliens and stuff in it and all this weird <laughs> shit now. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it's, it's weird, but yeah. No, I don't like Münster. But Cologne is pretty, pretty cool. Cologne was this week as well, I think, wasn't it? Last Did you week. See it last week, yeah. Last week was, yeah, Cologne. Oh no, last night was Berlin, wasn't yes. it? Yeah, yeah. I genuinely love Tattoo. It's great for learning. For people that don't know Tattoo, it's like a, it's a crime show. Every Sunday, it's been running for a long time, Tattoo. Since the 60s, 70s. Yeah. yeah like every and, Sunday. Yeah, like every Sunday. And there's different teams. So it's like, yeah, maybe three times a year you get Cologne and then there's Dresden and Berlin. and Yeah, Dresden I really like as well. Yeah, Dresden one's good. And Kiel as well are quite a good one. Munich. And then there's one in Switzerland. There's one. And the Vidier, they, yeah, it's part of the Vidier as well, I think. So the Cologne one is always done with the Vidier and stuff. I'm just thinking, oh, I wonder if you guys play the concert as well. I think playing. In with the mouse and then doing tattoo as well that'd be that's it you can you can retire happily after that that's the best it gets i mean for me um i didn't know that they played also the georgia smith machiavelli yeah. session yeah and my boyfriend showed it to me actually he's a musician oh. as well and he said like do you know in which orchestra you play and like <laughs> yeah i mean okay yeah, it's the idea you played with georgia smith like yeah. <laughs> you play with lawyer khan i was Oh my god, yeah. I, I need oh. to do it. That's, see, that's yeah. so much fun. Is there anything? Have you announced next season yet? Is that announced? The next season is already announced, okay. but I don't know it yet because okay. I'm like fixed yeah. <laughs> in this uh, yeah. season that we have. Uh, I have to go check if there's anything fun coming up next year. Eight concerts to go. and um, Yeah, with this current series of the, the concerts now? No, it's like it? um, the Ute Lempa concerts are uh, like Monday to Wednesday now. Yeah, so you're in Duisburg tonight. Duisburg, and Kursfeld and Leverkusen. And then oh, next, you're in Leverkusen, Köln. Yeah, next week is in Cologne, in the WDF und Chaos. Nice, okay. Alles weiter. Okay. And then um, afterwards, we play in the Alte Oper Frankfurt with a, like crime series music from the uh from here plays from the 40s until now until okay. present okay with bastian pastevka the german people will probably know i don't me. know who that He's, is either. um comedian okay the most funny one for me okay and really nice guy as well he's absolutely funny i could die every time okay. i talk with him he's like yeah he he breaks me like <laughs> okay i have to check him out i die of yeah. laughing every time okay and he's um we do a series with him the concert is already online okay on youtube you can Check watch the whole concert from like two months ago okay we had uh, like a concert series with him as well was he like telling jokes at the time or what does he do at the he was time? Ex no he was also we played music to a special here play from the like 40s then he played an example and then he explained about oh, uh, okay. what it was about and then joking okay. and about it. And oh, that sounds fun as well. Like he takes all the funny bits that like um, something that like mishappened on the yeah. on the here play. Yeah. And that was absolutely not logical or something. Yeah, and yeah. then he makes fun of it mm. and he takes out his bits and plays it in front of the book, uh, oh. in front of the people. And it's like really funny. See, that sounds like so chill as a concert as well. That sounds like so much fun. Yeah, we need, you don't need to concentrate because you get distracted all the well, time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because if someone's telling jokes and stuff, you have to... Yeah. yeah. Very true. And I have to ask you as well. I am going to ask you about your flute. I'm going to ask you about Dreis in a minute as well. But before that, the video, I probably haven't said this actually, but they're based in Köln, Cologne, mm -hmm. where we both live. Um, you're not from Cologne. You've only moved here recently. How do you find Cologne so far? I love it. I love the yeah. people. Yeah. The people are... Everyone talks about the people here. I've only lived in Köln, but I, I do like them. 
Yeah, when you ask someone that was born in Cologne, they will always tell you the city is ugly, but the people are nice. That's kind of true, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and I think it is explaining the city yeah. like pretty good. Yeah. It's because the people make the city nice. A hundred percent. I don't yeah. think even that it is that ugly. I think it's, it's not terribly the ugly. The atmosphere is like yeah. so cool. Yeah. And there's so much happening in Cologne. So many things. So many people live here. That, Have you done carnival? Um, no, I went to Amsterdam with my boyfriend. Oh, did you escape I'm, because of Cologne carnival? I was not mentally ready. Yeah. You, oh, you have to be though. Yeah. <laughs> carnival because it is... was. It was. First of all, I moved here first of November, and then on the eleventh, yeah, there was already later. that one, yeah. and and I experienced it. I was the whole day in my flat, and it was, it was. I felt like I live in a stadium. Like <laughs> it was, it was so bad. Yeah, because around then, here is And then I, yeah. I asked my boyfriend, "Do, do you, I have free time at Carnival? Do you want to travel somewhere? I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be in the city yeah. at the time. Yeah, because." I love the atmosphere yeah. when it is about like having fun and like this comedy and, yeah. and dressing up and I totally understand it but nobody but it talks about the shit that is happening outside of it like you know there is a lot yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like, absolutely crazy there is there is stuff happening that is absolutely unthinkable there is yeah it's like the end of the world sometimes around yeah here. and you, you go like it's not even people are not embarrassed to show it in the middle of the street and I'm 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 like, it is. what in the hell is going on? Yeah, especially on? if you it's live really somewhere hard. here, because you can see people in the street there, and you look down, you go, oh, no, <laughs> no. So I didn't do carnival okay. this year. I will do it probably next year. Okay. What I did was the Stunksitzungen. It's like this, Oh, yeah, I love the Sitzungen, yeah. With my colleagues as well. Oh, they booked okay. a table. They had one spare ticket, and they asked okay. me if I could want to go. And They're they said, fun. Yeah. yeah. And the Stunksitz, that one colleague plays, actually. There. Oh, okay. He's a drummer there. Cool. And so it's like more fun. Even oh, that more is fun. fun, yeah. Have you got an idea for a costume for Carnival? Have you thought about your costume yet? No. Oh, you have to think about it. I'm so boring sometimes. <laughs> I, I have to get a good costume. Okay, before we move on, I do want to talk about your flute. Yeah. Because one thing I love, yeah, I haven't actually looked yet. Oh, you play on offset G. There you go. I, I love asking Do you play people. inline? I play inline, yeah. Oh. Why do you play offset? I don't know. It was the flute uh, that fit me okay. the best. Did you always play offset, even as a kid? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And is that normal in Austria? Do most people in Austria play? Yes. Okay. It's normal in Ireland. That no, but in people. France. I bought my flute in France. So really? everyone plays in line in Paris. My best friend, she's a flutist as well. Okay. She played in Oslo Philharmonic and in Vienna. And uh, she's playing in Lana as well. Okay. 14 carat Muramatsu. But, um, and I played her flute. I mean, it's easy. I have long fingers. So yeah, so it works, it's, yeah. It's not a problem for me, but I was always uh, like used to offset. I think that's it. You get used but to it as well. it was not a criterion that I yeah. looked for when I bought this flute. I bought it in 2018 in Vienna. And actually, I had my Muramatsu DS, um, yeah. Heavy Wall, oh, great flutes. for 10 years. Okay. Like. <coughs> and then afterwards... I thought like I couldn't improve more on this flute. I was okay. trying to give they more air and to flutes. yeah get better sound, but it was not that great. So what flute do you have now? <coughs> I bought a fourteen carat with uh, silver mechanics um, Muramatsu. Muramatsu yeah. It is beautiful. It was flute. actually the first golden flute that I tried. Yeah. <coughs> it fit me so well, and then I. I thought like with 18, no, oh, this can't be it. You know, I need to try something else. Yeah, Maybe that's yeah. something better. And I tried 100, 200 different flutes <laughs> in in Germany, in Austria, like everywhere. And, and this was the one. This you... was the one. I always came back to this one. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. Don't worry, take your time. Um, and also, but you were saying you've got a custom head joint. It's not a Miramatsu head joint. No. I'm also already um, also selling at the moment the uh, mm. Matsu Hecho and it's like Flotissimo if you know him. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's okay, like you can advertise it here then you can tell people it's on there. <laughs> Buy it. <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, on, it's uh, like, yeah. Oh <laughs> well, yeah, well, I'll put a link in down, we'll find it, we'll recommend people go and buy it then. There you are guys. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good headshot, yeah. But you've got a very special head joint. Yes. Oh, I can see the engraving around the top as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's um, it's uh, Salvatore Follisi had shown, yeah. and it's the Emmanuel Puyu model. 
Yeah, so tell us about this Emmanuel Bayou model, because you told me before the podcast, this is fascinating. He constructed it with Salvatore yeah. a few years ago, it, uh, and actually this one is the prototype of this model. So um, The very it was, first one? Yeah, um, I think the very, very first one has, um, Emmanuel has this okay. head joint. Okay. But um, it's like the first one that went like into this production, it yeah. was tried yeah. out. And it was really special because in the inside it's 22 carats. It sounds really nice. It's like, I mean, I love it. And what do you, do you have obviously beef at joint? And is that the C-sharp trill at the bottom as well? Yes. Wow, you have all the bells and whistles. I love it. I don't have all of them. Like, you have I have splitting? colleagues. There, there are some people like, yes, I have. Um, people are like sometimes having a... Uh, an extra frill oh yeah as well i don't even know what that does i probably should know that <laughs> it's for it's fine i think it's for g sharp or something okay like when you're up high there is like they have oh, an extra like frill. or something is it called yeah i think i know what you're talking about actually yeah oh they're so, really cool yeah i again the only reason probably like yourself the only reason i got this flute is because it came on the market and i tried it and i loved it so i didn't care if it had inline G or offset G or C foot joint or B I didn't care. I just like, I want that flute and it's got it. It's absolutely the same with me. Um, it was actually a quite funny story because I went to my professor, I studied um, in Graz, Vienna. Yeah. And um, I told him like, I always come back to this flute. Yeah. I don't, I think it is my flute. I don't yeah. know what to do because nobody wanted it somehow. A few people, like really a lot of people tried it there in Vienna in the flute. Um, Flutenwerkstatt, mm -hmm. I know what but I um, yeah, no one wanted it, and I really wanted it, and so I went to have a lesson with him, and he said, "Okay, we will go down now there and have a lesson there with this flute." And oh, I was wow, like, okay. "Like now?" Yeah. But we, we don't, we, we don't have like a. Yeah, shouldn't we ask if we can come? Yeah, yeah, I, I will call, and then <laughs> he rent a car to go there. Wow, with me and. <laughs> So we went there and um, he has the absolute same model okay but uh, only like 25 years older than mine okay so with a Sheridan head joint mm. and um, like the really old ones yeah, yeah. still I, re I, I I was obsessed with this head joint are yeah. so nice they're so good yeah they're, especially the like 20 25 year olds yeah. yeah they're so good and yeah he there was like my silver flute his muramatsu yeah this one and then we tried it he tried it we had lesson on it um he showed me or how i can like yeah. change uh, sound and everything and then he said yeah you can do two things you can like not buy it mm -hmm. and try hundreds thousands of other flutes again yeah or you can buy it now I think the second option, like, would like you know, spend you would spend less time. Yeah. And it would be really great if you have this flute because it fits you really well. Yeah, so I took it that day. Wow, and that was it. That was it. Yeah, my grandpa. Um, that is so cool. Though. Sold our like weekend house in Serbia to get the flute. To get the flute. Oh my god, I kind of love that though as well. So it like it's not only special to me because it's my golden flute. It's special to me because um, my grandpa died a few years ago. Um, he was the most important person, and he wanted us to sell um, his flat in Belgrade. Yeah. So when this was done, the money was used to get me that hand joint. So the whole flute that. is like financed by my grandpa. God bless him. He's like. The, he was the most important person to okay. me. He was my biggest fan. Yeah. He was such a cool guy. Like. Yeah. Was he a musician? Yes. Everyone was a musician okay. in my family, or everyone is a musician in my family. <laughs> and yeah, he he made sure that I stayed with this instrument. And we we've been talking for a while. So I, I do have fun questions I want to ask you. I also do want to briefly talk about your time in Dresden because that must have been cool. Like, so you were at the Academy of the Staatskapelle Dresden. Mm -hmm. Who was the conductor at the time? Is it still Tiedemann? It's still yeah. Tiedemann this season. Because he's leaving this year, I think, isn't this he? This season, yeah. Is it Daniele Gatti's yes. taking over? Yeah. So 
Um, what did you do in the in the academy? Like, do you get to play with the players often? Do you study with the players? What's the sort of how's the setup? Everything. It was so much. It was a really really cool academy. Um, I played so much in yeah. every position. I was allowed to play principal fluid as oh, well. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Um, I was allowed to play their principal piccolo as well. Um, like for actual concerts with the orchestra? Yes, for operas mainly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was allowed to play the whole ring with Tielemann yeah. on second flute. Whoa. So colleagues there would uh, like play third, fourth and fifth flute yeah. if there was any. And wow. I was always allowed when I played with Tielemann, I was always allowed to play second flute. That's incredible. I played with, uh, we went uh, to have a tour with him, uh, with Mala Free. Yeah. Um, in Hamburg and Gewandhaus and a Musikverein of course oh. that was the most emotional concert for me Yeah, playing well, with him yeah. like in yeah. Vienna where I like studied and my professor went there with his wife oh. and everything like it was so and in cool such an iconic venue's Musikverein as well like that's the classical music venue I yeah think. and it like it was I'm so grateful for this two years. Yeah, I learned so much, like not was playing, but also how to, yeah, how to be in an orchestra, like how to. Yeah, not just any orchestra, but Staatskapelle Dresden, one of the biggest orchestras in the world, one mm. of the oldest orchestras as well. I think they were starting like fifteen seventy eight or something. I read somewhere fifteen forty seven. Oh, well done. Okay, wow. Yeah, so like they're one of the most famous orchestras in the world. It must have been incredible to just play in them. I would have loved that. Or. It was it? No, it was. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't have. They internet, have so. had four hundred seventy fifth jubileum. Oh really? Okay. Recently. This, this year. Oh, okay. Well, this season. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know if I can do the math. How quick is your math? Then it must be. Take off twenty four. Twenty twenty three. <laughs> so it must be forty eight. Yeah, fifteen forty eight. Well done. I was not gonna get there. Well done. <laughs> It's embarrassing. Yeah, we'll, probably we'll I'm that. Yeah, probably I'll I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'll get a calculator right afterwards. We'll correct it. Oh, that was so good. So you were there two years, and then you're here. And that was it. Yeah, I I mean it, I I've done everything pretty fast. So what I what I wanted to do in my career, like I wanted to get a fixed position. I wanted to have an academy. Yeah. And you I applied for it like two years ago. I was currently playing Western Story uh, in Austria like for three months. Okay. There was a big festival for uh, musicals every year in summer, open air, yeah. a pretty cool venue. And um, yeah, I was allowed to play there and I applied for it. And during this time, I went to Dresden. Mm. My first ever, like it was my second or third audition in total. <laughs> And that it was, was it. my first audition that was not in Austria. And I got it like immediately and I was so I was so stunned. Like now I have to move to Dresden. I was so shocked yeah. like, because I was how do we do it? I'm like I'm I'm twenty, twenty one, like yeah. and I didn't finish even my bachelor's, like how will I do this? Like, yeah. So I didn't I went there to the audition because I got an invitation without expecting that I would get it. Yeah. So I I was there two years. I had lessons with everyone from the flute group. Yeah. I had like my main mentor for flute, my main mentor for piccolo. Yeah. But I could have um, just ask them if it's okay to have with everyone other as well um, lessons. If- and I had like with the viola, principal viola, I had lessons. Like you could oh. choose everyone to have oh, lessons. That's the system, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can ask everyone if they want to and to have lessons yeah. with you. Oh, that is so cool. Yeah, and that's a really like yeah, that's a great education as well with those kind of music. Absolutely, and we have the we had the academy concerts. Yeah, we uh, play like chamber music a lot. We were allowed to play multiple symphonies. Then there's the Hofkirche in Dresden is like uh, directly um, across the street yeah. from the opera. Yeah. So I was too allowed to play principal flute there. It's like outside oh. of the academy. Yeah. You get paid extra for it. Oh, but, nice. Okay. But the flute group asked me often if I want to do it uh, oh, on principal. So I was allowed to play different, uh, like multiple mass. Um, mm. 
with with them there as principal and operas. There was a gala concert where we played Figaro in like a concert. Um, oh yeah, like a concert setup, arrangements yeah. and. Yeah. Uh, it was like free concert that day they allowed me to play principal for that it's all day like yeah that is great i had like more sometimes there was a really cool system you normally have like half of the of the rehearsals and concerts a month yeah of the fixed ones yeah but kind so of, yeah. it's normally 15 and they had this really cool concept if you have like one one month 22 rehearsals yeah. and concerts uh, the next uh, month you have like then less okay okay so i always had the time to go back to vienna and to finish my studies so i actually finished my bachelor yeah while being in while the academy being... <laughs> working <laughs> yeah so that's easy so i got my degree that was cool yeah then i could focus on have um ha doing auditions yeah so i started doing auditions there and yeah it was actually <sighs> quite a nice time well. Yeah, especially with flute pairs at that level. That's amazing. Okay, before I do want to get to the quick questions as well, because I know you have to go soon, so I don't want to take your time. But <laughs> there is one thing I have to say, actually, because I, I do a lot of research, obviously, for this podcast, because I'm very professional. But I put your name in. You into, do. I, I, noticed, I noticed you know everything. You, yeah, say that more to the camera. You can look at the camera and sponsors <laughs> you know if you're listening. Yeah. Um, no, I put your name into Spotify, and I, I could not believe this. I was, I was sitting last night, my girlfriend was like, oh, my God. So I put your name into Spotify. I don't know if you're aware of this, are you? So there's no records of you playing on Spotify, but there's some of your playlists that you have made are oh. public. Did you know this? No. <laughs> I saw. I found this yesterday. By the way, your playlists are the coolest playlists I have ever seen. I was <laughs> oh like, oh my this, god! Because like, okay, there was one playlist I found. There's your birthday playlist and there's an underrated playlist. And the first thing is one of my favorite songs of all time is Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino by the Arctic Monkeys. Yeah. There's a lot of Arctic Monkeys in here. Are you a big Arctic Monkeys fan? I'm. I'm basically a big indie fan. Yeah, I, I have these two yeah. two sections. I have this jazz and pop jazz and everything yeah. like alternative music, and then I and also this fusion music and yeah. everything. And then I have this indie. big indie part of me. You know, I mean, you can see Fleet Foxes. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. You can see Tinted House in the thing. Uh, White Lies. Yeah, I have all all the merch. Like I'm, is... I'm an absolutely big merch fan. That is so cool. Like, I have oh, this could be my play. Like the bands in here, I was doing this one. That's my play. That's it's the same thing. Yeah, like, the strokes, the liberty, the monkeys. There was a time I only listened to indie. It changed uh, again, really a lot. I'm, it's not mixed. Yeah. But my absolutely favorite band Please all time, me. Foles. Really, I love the Foles at the start. I love their first record when they came out. I was mad for them. I haven't listened to them as much in recent years. I have it on vinyl there in my oh, yeah? room. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed there was a bit of foals in there as well. Yeah, they're, that's what you <laughs> Yeah, it, like the first record, I remember, it, when did it come out? It must have been like 2010 or something. It was quite a while ago. I remember being either at school or at college when that came out, and I fucking loved the first record. Then I wasn't as mad afterwards for the next ones, but they're still, I haven't listened to the latest one yet either. Listen to the last album, it's like yeah. pretty great again. Yeah, and good. they have like this special sound. I think it's really tasty. Yeah, and I can... Go ahead. Yeah, I was also a big fan of the Killers. Uh, oh, yeah. I went to the, the concert great. Yeah, oh. in Vienna. So I had a time where I went like during this academy yeah. time because like Dresden and Berlin, everything is it's so like, near. Yeah. Yeah. Also Cologne, so many good indie bands come here and Everyone jazz comes to Cologne, bands. That's like, cool, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I um, went to. I bought tickets for myself and went alone to concerts in Berlin, oh, yeah. everywhere, like I love Leipzig. And yeah, I mean, you don't have to wait for anyone. Exactly. <laughs> and you, you go there you and want. enjoy it, dance, and then you go home afterwards, and then you have you you alone with this feeling that I the concert totally agree. gave you, and totally you don't agree. have to share it. You don't have to socially interact with people. Exactly. It sounds weird. It sounds fucking weird. No, but I agree. you know, I'm in so much social contact throughout the day yeah. with people so some things i really appreciate when i do it, do it alone. alone yeah yeah i know i see what you mean because when i go to concerts with people although i enjoy it you always be like oh uh, you know do i have to sing along do i have to see how they're getting on do we have to talk about it and i sometimes i just want to go on my own my favorite band's the arctic monkeys and when i go to them, ah, I've been to them yeah. seven times i think Most i of had times tickets I for them two times but i had concerts that you haven't day. seen them yet no ah oh, because they were in linz and vienna and in prague and i had tickets for them and 
recently or a couple of years ago? The Linz concert, it was last year. I was at that tour, it was great. The car tour, yeah, with the new album. Oh, it's my favourite one. Do yeah. you have a do you have a favourite Arctic Monkeys album? I've never asked that question in this podcast. I've been dying to ask that question to a flute player. I've never met a flute player that likes the Arctic Monkeys yet, weirdly. My favourite is probably um, I Wanna Be Yours. Ah, oh, yes. Or um, Fluorescent Adolescent. Oh, yeah, that's from the second so, record. Two yeah. great ones. I Wanna Be Yours is actually, that was by a poet. That was by a guy called John Cooper Clark. But if you ask me, you know, I think that's this album. I don't know from from which how it how this album is called. If you show me the picture, I'll know definitely. Am. Am is yeah, that's yeah. the rock album. It's cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's my favorite album. Yeah. I never thought I'd get to ask that. Right. Okay. Really quickly, <laughs> we'll blast through some questions. These are quick, quick fire. But if you yeah, doesn't. But I'm great. also I want to say I'm also obsessed with music from the eighties. I'm also obsessed yeah, with, the, disco with the fashion. Well. Yeah. Yeah, the good old times playlist. Yeah, it's great. I, only music from the eighties. I have so many vinyls from. I love. This I music collect well. three different types. I collect indie vinyl. Yeah. I collect eighties music, like yeah. uh, from pop rock, like this disco, everything, and then I collect jazz. That's the three things. Like I'm that's the three best things. With. Yeah, yeah I, I totally get that. Yeah, jazz I haven't got into yet, but eighties music I am mad for. And eighties style and fashion, everything. <sighs> like yeah, yeah, I have a really strong and opinion. I think, I think no matter where you go in the world, if you go to any party in the world. There's only a few songs that everyone likes across the world. And I think one of those songs is Earth, Wind & Fire, September. I think everyone in the world likes that song. My absolutely favorite uh, vinyl is uh, the um, um, I Am I yeah. am from Earth, yeah. Wind & Fire. It's a great, right, a beautiful cover as well. Yeah, I love the cover. It's like in the up front yeah. <laughs> the oh. living room. Yeah, it's so much fun. We could talk about this more, but we have to get to the questions because <laughs> you have to go as well. Okay, first question. Favorite, do you have a favorite flute concerto? No. No, nobody ever says an answer. <laughs> no, not flute concerto, but my favorite concerto in general. Okay, good. To play with flute, yeah. Cacciaturium. To violin. play it as a flute player. To yeah. play it as a flute player. It's fucking hard though, it's really the hard. The third movement, I, I I want to do it with an orchestra. I think I might. Really? I, You're crazy I might, enough to I do that? I will ask Vidya to do it because oh. I really need to do it. I, it's, it's a, I want tickets to that if you do that then. It's like, I need to put a checkpoint on it. It's, yeah. I, it's hard. It'd be so much fun, though. But yeah. Cacciaturian, yeah. Okay. Do you remember the first flute album that you bought? Emmanuel Payu Mozart's flute concertos. Ah, oh, I was six years old. Perfect answer. That's a that's a good one. Like the version which he recorded in Salzburg. Yes, at the I Mozart know. house. Was it Salzburg Camerata you recorded it with? Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. It's like from from the from the nineties, early. Yeah, it's one of his early yeah. ones. Yeah. 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 It's a good one. Do you remember? This is going to be a great question now for you. Do you remember the first album you got in general? <coughs> Simply Red. Ah, oh, Simply Red. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> that's such a weird one. Were you Simply Red fan? It was <laughs> I my never first that. concert pop concert ever that I went to, and I Simply think it's good Red. music. I yeah. like him. As a kid, that was always my like when my growing up with ginger hair. That was always my comparison. I was like, oh, you could be in Simply Red. And fuck. But then the Weasleys came along and it made it a lot better. Anyway, that's a good one. Okay, no. if you could switch instruments and be as good as you are <clears> on the flute, what would you switch to? Probably, if it would be a melodic instrument, cello. Definitely Everyone cello. Says cello. But, but my grand, grandpa was a cellist. Okay. And I also okay, with started it. with cello, but um, oh. I'm left-handed. So I only, I don't know why, but I started to play cello as left-handed. Okay. So there was never an option to get an orchestra position with that. Ah, okay. So oh, I stopped playing the cello. And I also played okay. 10 years the drums. Mm. So, so drums, drums yeah. yeah, it would be really cool. Okay. Especially as a woman, it would be like... Stupid. Yeah, there's a couple of female drummers now popping up. The White Stripes had it, well, Meg White was, yeah. There's a couple of good ones. Uh, if you could have a career outside of music, what would you do? So entirely outside of music, can't be anything to do with it. Really? I wanted to always be do moderation on the television. What, like presenting TV shows yes. and stuff? Yeah. I could see you doing that, yeah. You'd be good Because at I can talk yeah. a lot. Yeah, you're a great <laughs> podcast guest as well, yeah. yeah. So, um, 
that's what I wanted to do. I also applied for that <laughs> to, to school in Vienna, but then I uh, won the academy in Dresden, so I had to cancel this. Well, you're working at the VDR now. You never know. There might be a, a I, someone I sick they someday. Always, they always search for people to, to like, moderate, so to, to present yeah. some shows. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Always, so. We could do a show together. We, we could do a free yeah. special. There we are. We could yeah, I mean, we can, we can do this more often yeah. as well. We right? the <laughs> to pay for it. Yeah. Okay, if you could have a drink with any musician, alive or dead, who would it be? My grandpa. Oh, good answer. Okay, fair enough. My grandpa, because first of all, I really miss him, uh, especially in these days when, you know, um, getting... Yeah, like passing my trial. Yeah, achieving so much, yeah. I would like tell him so many things that I like okay. about this and talk to him about it and ask him what what his experience with yeah. orchestra musician was. Because when there was the time, I was not in this material that much. Yeah. Like, I was not in the orchestra yet. He died like two months before I got the academy in Dresden. Oh, okay. So... Um, I had never the, the opportunity to talk with him about being in an in orchestra. orchestra. yeah being and playing in an okay. orchestra and being an orchestra musician so i really would love to do that's that. a great answer and okay. with our favorite red wine or his favorite uh, red wine it? Vranac. i don't know it it's Is a it serbian Austrian? oh serbian, serbian yeah. okay so Vranac wine and then okay because that was going to be my next question what killing was the whole drink? bottle yeah talking about being an orchestra musician oh, i would love to do that that sounds great. Is that your favorite drink then? Because my last question is, what's your favorite drink? You can pick alcoholic or non-alcoholic. We should put a mention out as well that we're drinking Spetsy and you are a fan of Spetsy because you want to sponsor us. Polana, you need to sponsor for this podcast. Yeah. I'm really... I'm, I'm talking about it all the time as yeah. well. They should sponsor it. I've even got a Polana cap. But yeah, anyway, sorry. What's your, what's your favorite drink? Alcoholic or non-alcoholic? I mean, non-alcoholic beer, Stöttebecker, what I, which, okay. I, which I already yeah. explained, the Atlantic Ale, because... What's that? Sorry, what's that Austrian soda? The one with, like, the little, like, mountain people. I'm not describing that very well. I would love Yeah. Do you like it? I like it. I mean, I don't it's drink really it that often. Very strange. Yeah. It's but good. But I really like it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I mean, um, Stöttebecker, because it reminds me, you know... Like being in a far distance relationship, yeah, that wasn't always that the case. Yeah. So uh, when I drink non-alcoholic shirt and back, it reminds me of my boyfriend. That's really <laughs> That's really so I'm gonna have to get a bottle. And it's non-alcoholic, so yeah, and there is less calories in yeah. it, and it tastes really great, and it gives wait, you wait, all wait, the wait. isotonic and everything. Exactly, yeah, it's good. yeah, yeah. That's what Germans <laughs> say. It right? can't be bad, you know. Yeah, wow, wow. And <laughs> alcoholic drinks probably, I mean, like. I'm fine with a good wine. Yeah, okay. Not that complicated. Not a cocktail person? I love cocktails. Yeah. I don't do cocktails. What's your favorite like cocktail? Me. Before we go then, that'll be the last question and I will let you go. Hmm, something like a Cosmopolitan or Mai Tai. Oh, I'm yeah. Getting the Sex in the City vibes. Yeah, but it's very <laughs> Sex in the City, yeah, Cosmo. <laughs> oh, great answer. Okay, before we go then, is there anything you want to tell the listeners to check you out? Obviously, you're on Instagram, Facebook... All that kind of stuff. I mean, I need to update, really need to update my website. But That's yeah, you can check me out on Instagram. Yeah. Marianne Buslechner. Yeah. And totally check me out on Instagram, Facebook, yeah. YouTube, on my website. Yeah. If you want to have lessons. Oh, you're lessons, teaching here as well? Yeah. Then? Oh, there you go. Like I had, I was teaching five years in, okay. in a private school in Austria. So I gave that up when I came to Cologne. Yeah. Do you do online lessons as well? <coughs> yes. There you are. See, you might get some I do online America, lessons as well if it. somebody wants to do them. And um, I wanted to start teaching again now that I passed my trial. Yeah. I have time to do yes. other stuff again. Oh, I've got you the perfect timing for that then. Great. So, well, then there yeah. you are. You can get in touch. Great. Well, then we'll wrap this up. You've got a concert to get to. But thank you very much. This was a lot of fun. Yeah. And for me as well. Thank you for calling. Oh, man. I'm very impressed. Thank you for the yeah, timing. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. I've got loads of spetsy. Don't worry. Um, right, guys, then thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>